Hello, hello, mic test. Hello, financial programmers. I am Ritwik Dasura, and I am back with a new video and some new learnings. In this video, we'll be talking about Pandas library. which is the most useful library for finance and i think everyone who is an aspirant of financial programming should be an expert of pandas library so yes watch this video till the end in the last two videos we talked about numpy and matplotlib library and we have explored all the functionalities which are used in these uh, libraries which are useful for the field of finance and as i mentioned in the last two videos as well i have taken some material from this course to make this playlist which is python for financial programming this is an extensive course which covers all the aspects of uh, different libraries um, like numpy matplotlib python pandas and also have some live projects just watch this video till the end and you'll see uh, all the details about this course and all the benefits that you will get perfect let's come to this code so basically this is the code that we have written in the last two videos i'm gonna start from here which is by importing pandas library and again as it's the same for numpy and matplotlib library as well in most of the cases this library is installed by default so i'm just going to uh, import pandas as pd right the two most important data structures of pandas are um series and data frame series is basically a data structure where we store uh, data in a one dimensional array and mostly for example if you imagine a table suppose the first column is basically a series if we include all different columns which is by including all different series we'll make a data frame that we'll be talking about very soon so let's uh, make an array first in the beginning we can make array by using numpy's functionality which is np.array right i have made this temporary array which is np.array my name ritwik my last name which is dashwar and let's take python as well these are the three strings it's a one dimensional numpy array now series would be pd.series and then inside this just provide temp you will see let me just provide some values some empty cells here such that it comes on the top so series is basically like this one we have one dimensional data structure which has ritwik dashwar and python strings as different items in different rows which is row number 0 1 and 2 now as we already know how to scoop different things uh, in different data structures we'll be doing the same thing here as well which is using the square brackets if i just do it like this it will give me the item which is present in the index 2 so index 0 1 2 which is python in this case right So in this case we have made our series using numpy array we can also do the same thing by using a dictionary alex is 1 john is 2 anna is 3 in that case series is equal to pd dot series and then temp so in this case the row headers are alex john and anna we also call this row headers as index which are basically alex john and anna and the numbers inside this column which is 1 2 and 3 Now let's uh, talk about a two-dimensional uh, data structure, which is data frame. Right? You guys might have might have worked on MS Excel extensively in the past, or are currently working on it. So in most of the cases, um, like we do work on some tables, right? Here on Python, we'll replace those tabular things in the format of data frame. So yeah, this is a random array which is one, two, three, four, five, and df is equal to pd dot data frame and then temp one. If I run this cell, you'll see it's a it's a table where row headers are one to zero, one to three, four. column header is 0 and these are the numbers which are present inside this particular data frame let me make a bit uh, bigger data frame for your better understanding so suppose uh, this is my data which is basically list of multiple lists right the, the first list is alex comma 10 second list is john comma 25 third list is anna comma 35 and the entire thing is inside a list so basically it's a list of lists now if i just write df is equal to pd dot data frame and then inside this just provide data and let me just uh, write columns right and then inside this let's just write name here and score here so these are the column headers that i'm providing if i run this one oh i forgot to run this cell if i run this cell you'll see um a table in front of you row headers are 0 12 column headers are name score and this is the data which is inside this particular data frame 
we can do the same thing using a dictionary as well so data2 is a dictionary and the the first key is name which is basically a list of multiple names alex john anna and rajesh second key is age and there are four different numbers here 10 25 35 and 24 df is equal to pd dot data frame data 2 is now being provided inside this index I, I want to provide the index names as well in this case it was 0 1 and 2 index in this case would be first second third and fourth and then df so let's see what is the result the result is basically this one where we have index names the row headers are first second third fourth the column headers are name age and this the this is the data which is inside this particular data frame now what if i want to change one of the uh, one of the names right suppose and i want to change change it to sophia right then in that case what i've done here is df and then inside name column i want to uh, i want to go to the second one which is 0 1 2 which is anna i want to change it to sophia right it will give me a warning but you can just um, ignore it so df is equal to this one you can see df is basically a new data frame where sophia is on the second index right and the index name for the second index is third you should always remember that indexing in python starts from zero zero one two three four five and so on right now what if you uh, if you want to select row number three which is this one with the index third then in that case there are two ways to do this which is the first one is df dot i lock and then inside this i i want the second index right which is the third row in this case if i do it like this you will see a series right with sophia and 35 name is sophia and age is 35 uh, if you don't know the index number they can just write location which is this one and then inside this just write the index name in this case it's third i'll just write it like this and you'll see sophia and age is 35 now this is the data frame if you want to include one more column here which is say country then in that case you just need to provide it like this uh, df and then inside this just write country and then provide the country names suppose china us india and spain then in this case what it will do is it will create another column which is country and will provide the name of the countries in that particular column if you want to delete some columns then you just need to use df dot drop and then columns is equal to suppose country only i want to delete country column again and then in place is equal to true why we use in place in place is basically used to make it permanent if you don't use it in the next cell if you run df it will again show country in order to make it permanent i am going to use in place is equal to true so if i run df now there is no country column in front of you again right now if you want to delete one of the rows then in that case i'm going to use the same functionality which is drop and you can see df dot drop and rather than providing con columns here just provide the index name which is third and in place is equal to true again if i run df now you'll see uh, the third row is now deleted which is sophia and 35. if you want to scoop out a part of uh, this data frame it's again similar to the thing that we have already done suppose it's one comma three we have scooped out the first uh, row i just um, have selected the second the third row right if uh, we are doing one comma two then it will basically give me only the second row now a very very important functionality of uh, a data frames is to use head function right in this case basically we use uh, head functions uh, to just display the number of rows which are presented inside parentheses uh, such that it's easier for us to do analysis sometimes data set is so huge that you cannot print or you cannot display the entire data set or data frame in front of you then in that case we need to use head and tail another one is tail so it's df dot tail head will show me the top n rows and tail will show me the bottom end rows right in this case i've used two so it is showing me first two rows and it is showing me last two rows now so this is uh, df if you want to get all the indices first second and fourth in a list then in this case just write df dot index right you'll see the entire uh, index in front of you just provide it inside a list and you'll see this uh, all the in, uh, uh, index are now inside this list which is first second and third and fourth now um 
there is another uh, important functionality of data frames pandas data frame that you will use multiple times which is transposing now in order to do some vector calculations um, i think most of you guys would know this thing that for example 3 com 3 cross 2 matrix can be mul multiplied with with 2 uh, cross 3 matrix for example then in that case we have to transpose some of the data frames to reverse the magnitude of different dimensions for example in this case if you just write df dot shape you'll see 3 cross 2 3 2 is uh, the dimension now if you want to make it 2 3 then in that case what i'm going to do here is d comma t right this is 2 3 right that's 2 and then 3 basically we are transposing it right now let me just come back in the beginning okay perfect this one let me just run this cell i want this data frame let's just come till the end df yeah perfect this is the new data frame now for df now if i want to calculate the standard deviation of age in this case it's very very easy uh, in pandas which is just using pd uh, sorry df dot std and provide the column name for which you want to calculate the standard deviation so df age and the std you'll see the standard deviation is 10.28 approximately right if you just write df dot describe it will give you a lot of information about age column count is 4 mean is 23.5 standard deviation is 27 sorry 10.27 which is the same which you have got it here as well minimum value is 10 25% percentile 50% percentile uh, 75 percentile and then maximum value here in this particular column let's just again provide the con uh, the countries here right so this is a new data frame now i'm only interested in the country and the age column i don't want uh, to display the name column i don't want to delete it but i don't want to display as well then in that case uh, how to scoop it in a way that it is not deleted what i'm going to do here is df2 is equal to df then in, there are two square brackets let's just pick country and age here right if we write df2 you'll see country is the first column which is the third column here and age is the second column which is the second column here as well we are not displaying the name column here right now i want to make it a bit more complicated i am interested in country and name column of this particular data frame and only want to see the second and the third row so i want to put filters in both row headers and column headers in that case what i'll do here is df dot lock right just provide the um, index name which is which are second and third and provide the the column names here uh, separately if i run this cell you'll see we have put filters in both the column headers and the row headers now what if if you are interested to see what is present in any particular cell right then in that case i am going to use the functionality which is at right now how to get for example in this case how to get to this one which is china it's basically third right the index name is third and the country is and the column header is country right so let's come back here i will use at functionality third and country you'll see china as the output now where it is you it is used specifically to get one cell information inside a huge table it can be two dimensional three dimensional four dimensional etc that's where it is useful so that we can dig very deeper inside the data frame to extract just one cell information this can be done in this way as well which is i add and then i've i've provided the index numbers right 3 comma 2 if i come here 0 1 2 and 3 which is this one and 2 is basically 0 1 2 right so india is the output that we have got here now what if i want to um put a filter on age that uh, the age should be either greater than 30 or less than suppose 11 right i am interested in the first one and the third one right then in that case what i'm going to do here is df uh, one square bracket and then let's just provide a parenthesis here df age should be greater than 30 or now we represent or by using this particular sign uh, which is a straight line i don't know what to call it but it is mostly present above the enter key uh on the windows laptop so yeah this is the one and the second one is second co uh, condition is it should be less than 11 right so this is a or sign if you want to see what's the output just run it and you'll see that we have put a filter here where we have got this one and the the the, the first row and the third row right which is alex and anna
so yes that's it for this video guys i know that i have covered a lot of information in just one video and i just wanted to cover all most important uh, aspects of uh, pandas library but there are a few more remaining and uh, in order to explore those i highly recommend you guys to check out my um, course on python for financial programming the link is in the description box just click on that and select one of these things for indian rupee or uh, international currency you will see this page in front of you and just scroll down a bit you will see all the different aspects of this course five sessions 10 chapters 22 videos 10 quizzes three challenging assignments two live projects which are this one and one live session per month just pause this video and read about the live projects this is the course syllabus and for uh, in the third session i have talked about numpy matplotlib and pandas library you can see that i had to do two different videos because there is a lot of things uh, uh, inside the pandas library which are useful for the finance domain and um, and also very important thing is that we need to practice it a lot so i have provided a lot of quizzes and assignments with solutions and in the end you'll see these two live projects uh, which are stock analysis and investment portfolio creation now the very good thing about this course is that you'll get all these things the entire pentagon at a very very discounted price because we are currently running a discount campaign uh, that is if you provide the discount code rtk40 you'll get a 40 percent instant discount and the post discount cost for this course is very very low just go till the top here click on enroll now and book your seat and enroll and join the army of more than 100 people who have already enrolled and are learning at a very exponential pace in the next video i will be talking about the date time library peace